Thanks for joining me for this video. This presentation is going to be slightly different to what I normally do, but it is still photography related. One of the biggest arguments from flat earthers is that the images of the earth are fake. They refer to them as CGI. They seem to not understand why the images of the earth from space have stars in some of the shots and why in others the stars disappear. The other problem they have is why the various images taken from space of the earth the continents in the images seem to vary in size. I'm a simple man, so let me try and explain this in non-technical terms. The great news is, we can demonstrate these variations very easily with some basic props and a camera. Here we have our first image from the shoot. In this image, you can see the stars quite clearly and brightly, but the Earth is in darkness. The brightest light source in this image are the Christmas tree lights, which going forward are referred to as our stars. You can also see there is a hot spot in the middle of the Earth globe, and that is due to the modeling light that I hadn't switched off on the strobe. My studio light was still on, but I switched off the trigger so the studio light wouldn't fire. My camera settings for this first image were 1 15th of a second for the shutter speed, f-stop was at f11 and ISO 8000. Let me explain these camera settings before we go any further. I'm going to leave my f-stop where it is in all three images as I want to keep the background stars in focus as much as possible. Because of the very low light in this particular image, I have used ISO 8000 which adjusts the camera sensor. The higher the number the more light sensitive the sensor is. Finally, with the shutter speed, I will need to adjust that, as my 600 watt studio strobe, even at its lowest setting, is far too powerful for this demonstration. I have set the strobe and trigger to high speed sync. Now let's have a look at the image once we turn on the studio light to simulate the sun. The image lighting conditions have changed drastically because we turned on the studio flash but didn't adjust the camera settings to suit the new addition of the light. As you can see, my camera settings are still the same. The earth is heavily blown out, so now we need to adjust our camera settings to suit and get a proper light exposure of the earth. We now have the correct settings for the exposure of the earth, but there has been a drastic change with our background stars. They have disappeared. I increased the shutter speed to weaken the light source. The ISO also decreased from 8000 to 200, but in doing that, the ambient light from the stars vanished. Because the Earth is the brightest area of the image, our stars no longer have enough light to overpower or even equal our light source on the Earth. This explains why in the night images of the Earth from space, you can see the stars and the day images, you can't. Now, let's have a look at why the continent sizes vary in different images. I set up my camera on a tripod and once I worked out my settings, I didn't change them for the rest of the shoot. I was using my Pentax 645Z with a 55mm f2.8 prime lens. My first few shots were about 3 meters from the globe. I then moved into about 200mm from the globe, refocused and snapped the close-up images. Now that we have our images, let's bring the two images into Photoshop. The first image that was shot needs to be cropped so it fills the whole image frame. Now let's grab the second image and drag and drop it into the first image.
By changing the opacity of the image, we can resize the second image so the circumference of the globe matches the first image. We can now readjust the opacity of the second image once we have finished resizing. Now let's compare the two images. You can see that South America is slightly larger in the second image than the first image. Also we have lost the bottom portion of Africa on the right and also the Antarctica. So. What is happening here? This change is due to perspective. Let's get little Johnny to help us out to understand. You can see that at this particular distance, Johnny can see the whole globe. Let's move Johnny and the globe in closer together. With the very tight distance that we now have, the continents now appear to be bigger to Johnny because a portion of his field of view of the globe has disappeared behind the curve. Let's go back to our images and this time we'll resize the continents so they match in size as close as possible. Now we have our continents the same size, you can see that the globe is actually smaller than the first long distance image. The closer we get to the globe, the bigger the continents become. Thanks so much for watching this video and sticking around to the end. Please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button and the notification bell.